So it's been a little while since I recorded. I'm trying to get better about this. I think I feel like I say this all the fucking time, but so we had like some staff changes and the business got really busy. And so I went from pretty much being outside of the day to day in my business to being like all the way back in to the day to day shit. So I haven't really had any time to do much of anything. I haven't been recording, haven't been posting um, on social or anything, but I'm trying to get back into that. Right now, we got some new people coming in, so all this stuff's coming together. So uh, today, I wanted to just um, follow up on some stuff that after I released the previous episode, which I talked about um, acceptance and um, you know accepting things as they are and trying to um, trying to focus on things you can control and different like Stoic philosophy type shit. But one thing I I realized I didn't cover was that even though I was talking about all these challenges of the year. It still ended up being a good year. I mean, outside of my dog dying, that, that totally sucks. But even that, even that sort of relates to what I wanted to talk about today. So there's something that, uh, Marcus Aurelius Anderson, um, not Marcus Aurelius, the stoic philosopher, the, this guy was named after him, Marcus Aurelius Anderson. He's, um, he was on the show if you go back a little ways back and he, he has a, a philosophy of his own. It's like a strength through adversity. Well, I mean, it's not his, I mean, he, he tells it really well, but it's not like he's the only person that talks about that, but, um, he, he talks about all that kind of stuff quite a bit. And, um, also just, uh, something that I never heard anybody else talk about before I had, I heard him say it, which was, having gratitude for the hard stuff, which is a very powerful concept to get your head around. It really helps me get through a lot of stuff, especially when things are hard. So what I didn't cover, uh, especially with the business stuff, I had talked about all these challenges throughout the year, and it was just like an exceptionally, an especially hard year. I wouldn't say exceptionally hard. It was, uh, it was just harder than normal but we still ended up growing 30%. So, I mean, that's not too bad. Um, I'd like to grow more than that, but it wasn't like we were struggling and then things were just going wrong at all times. It was like we were, we were pushing through the adversity and we were learning lessons while we were doing that. And we ended up seeing some growth. The other thing I wanted to just touch on briefly was, you know, um, even though my dog passed away, I handled, handled it a lot better than I have in uh, previous And I don't know. I mean, maybe that's not even the right way to say it. It's not so much. I don't know if there's a better or worse way to handle that, but um, I I feel like I gained a lot from the adversity of losing the previous two dogs. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It sounds weird to talk about it like this, but 2020 Hooper died, 2022 Shorty died, then 2023 Herbie died. So it was like, those are pretty close together, a lot closer than I would like. And I feel like when Hooper died, it was, um, it was just absolutely crippling. And, and, um, I didn't start drinking more, which like, I don't recommend anybody doing that. Like, obviously you don't want to, when you use substances to dull what you're going through, you're only going to make it worse. Cause like once that shit wears off, then you actually feel worse than you would had, <laughs> had you not, uh, done that. So, I mean, I was kind of, um, I didn't, I didn't go like full dark. Um, but it definitely hit me really hard. And then when Shorty passed, I had already gone through that experience of making the decision to put an animal to sleep. Like when they're suffering and they're, they're not having a good quality of life, you start to get an impression that they don't really want to be here anymore. And so those things, those decisions that decision got a little bit easier with Shorty. And then I wouldn't say the decision to do that with Herbie got easier, but, um, dealing with him passing, I don't know, in some ways it was easier. And I think it was because of the adversity and kind of the lessons I learned from the adversity. And, you know, like when Hooper died, it was like unimaginable, like before Hooper died, when I had all my dogs, I just was like, Oh my God, I just can't even imagine what it's like. And I think, I think going through that with Hooper, it was like, now I can imagine what it's like. It totally sucks, but it's probably, it's not quite as, 
Like I, I just thought my life would just be in shambles, which I, it kind of felt like that on the inside, but I was still productive. You know, I was still doing my stuff. So I don't know. Hopefully this doesn't sound insensitive. I mean, I love my dogs so much. So it's like, sucks to think about these kind of things, but the more you go through it, I think the stronger you get and the more capable you are of dealing with it. It doesn't make it so that you don't, you don't feel bad because it sucks, but I think you get a little more, a little more capable of handling it. So it's definitely the case in business. It also never gets easier. It actually gets harder the more you grow because you, you're growing into a, a place where you've never been. So you got all these new challenges and especially if you start getting more and more staff, then that's a lot more pressure, especially if you care if, I mean, I think if you're operating a business and you don't care about your people, then you're kind of a dick. If you're not a dick, then you obviously care about these people and they're relying on you to do your part to move the company forward. And you're relying on them to help you do that. And, you know, they're putting food on their tables, you know, they're feeding their families and shit if they have one, but either way, they're still relying on you to, um, for their livelihood. And that's a lot of pressure and it gets harder and harder as you go. And I don't think it's ever going to get easier, but that's what I signed up for. And, you know, having a year like what happened last year, I feel like I'm more, I'm still stressed the fuck out all the time, but I feel like I'm more equipped to deal with things as they come, uh, you know, than I would be had 2023 been like a real easy year. So regardless of what happens in 2024, I I feel a little more prepared. And 2023 wasn't even, I mean, I don't know, 2020 was pretty fucked up. I mean, obviously, for obvious reasons, and we got shut down. And so we were operating, you know, behind, uh, behind, you know, closed doors doing pickups and shit like that. Luckily, I had a team that all wanted to work. I remember when, uh, when the shit first popped off, you know, like I was like, I don't know, maybe we should just kind of lay low a little bit. And I was just shipping packages by myself. And after a while we were getting kind of busy and people were calling the shop and being like, Oh, I need to buy some paint. And so I, I called Adrian and I was like, Hey man, um, you know, it's up to you. It's your choice, but, uh, you want to work? And he's like, please let me come to work. Like he just wanted to work, you know? So I was grateful to have them and, and Ricardo also, and then Cub was around, he was working with us around this time too. So I, it was, um, you know, it was a tough year, but like we, we all wanted to work. And then the riots started happening. They were rioting like just minutes away. They weren't rioting in Pedro, but they were rioting in the, in Long Beach and they were busting open all these fucking businesses and shit. So we had our place all boarded up and, you know, so anyway, the point is, is like, all those challenges, supply chain issues and all that kind of stuff. Like I I'm stronger now that I've gone through that. So I am grateful for all of these things, you know, as fucked up as it might say it might be, but I'm grateful for what I gained from it. Like I'd prefer to not have to deal with adversity and death and all this kind of stuff. But like you can at least find gratitude in something which is what you gained out of going through that experience and overcoming that adversity. So that was the one thing I wanted to cover. And then another thing it's related, you know, um, no matter what people are going through and I didn't used to think this, you know, I used to, I used to, uh, I used to have a pretty negative, negative, uh, outlook on people in general. And, and if I'm being honest, I mean, I still, I still kind of do in a sense, and I don't know if I can explain it. My girlfriend and I joke about stuff like this all the time, but at the end of the day, and I, and I know I didn't used to feel like this, but I do now. I, I actually believe in people, like even shitty people, you know, to, to a certain extent. I mean, if like, you know, people like Stalin and Hitler and pedophiles, like fuck those people. I'm not talking about them. I'm I'm talking about people that have normal fucking adversities and they fuck up in sort of normal everyday life type of fuck ups, not like genocide or ruining people's lives and shit. Like none of not that shit I'm talking about everyday fuck. I don't know. <laughs> I'm having trouble even coming up with examples, but 
the point is, is I believe in people, you know, I believe in people's ability to bounce back from shit that they're dealing with. So you can look at examples and you can find people like this all the time. Inspirational people like David Goggins, who was like, overweight and drinking and eating all kinds of shitty food. And he couldn't even get it into the military, I think, because he was too overweight. And and now that dude's a fucking animal, you know, like he's, he's just doing all this crazy shit that seems impossible. And he, he came back from some shit. Andy Frisella was leading his company at 350 pounds. And he's trying to talk to everybody about discipline. But but he's carrying around over 100 pounds of additional body fat. And he starts feeling like a fraud standing in front of people telling him about discipline when, you know, he's not showing that same discipline in his life. And you look at him now from that time, he's, his business is like grown exponentially. I don't even know how many times I don't, I saw, I heard an interview with him just recently and he was talking about it. I think they had like, I don't even, I don't even want to misquote it. Just look at Ed Milet's latest podcast episode. I don't know if it'll be the latest one by this com- time this comes out, but there's an Ed Milet podcast episode with him and Andy, and he talks about that. But he was able to overcome that. There's people that that are much less well-known, like people that we've seen in our life, like Cub, for example. I mean, he, he was a drug addict, and I didn't know him then, so I, I don't really have like a lot of examples. But the way he talked about himself and the person that I knew was, was a dramatically different person. He would talk about being, he was the negative guy in the room. You know, he was like always being very negative and obviously dealing with substance abuse issues. And then the person that he became was like an entirely different person. So I wonder, I wonder if people that were around him when he was in the thick of it, if they, if they could imagine that he would become the person that he ended up becoming. Unfortunately, he relapsed, which I don't have a, the best understanding of how that stuff works, but I do understand that, um, overcoming addiction isn't something you just fix for most people. I'm sure with some people, they, they get over it and they're no longer a drug addict, but then there's other people that, that say, you know, you're always a drug addict. So you always have to make sure you're you know, doing the things you need to do to make sure you stay on track. But then you see people also that are like, you know, they go from being 400 pounds and barely able to walk. And then all of a sudden they're in like way better shape than like, I don't know, 99% of the population, you know? So we have the ability to bounce back and, and overcome things. I mean, I know I was much fatter. I was like, I don't know. There was a point in my life where I was like carrying like 60 pounds extra body fat. I was doing some drugs. I was drinking too much, smoking weed every day. And um, I, I'm healthier and in better shape and have way more energy than I did when I was in my 20s because of shit like that. You know, this whole thing kind of started. I was talking to a guy and And as I was talking to him, I was, I I had this thought and I was thinking like, I was like, man, I believe in you. I was, I didn't tell him that I should have probably should have told him that, but that's what I was thinking. I was like, man, I believe in you. Like, and the reason I was thinking that was because the way he was talking, it didn't seem like he believed in himself. And I was like, man, I wish this dude would just believe in himself. You know, I wish he would just, uh, just believe that he can overcome all of this shit. And a lot of things he was talking about is stuff that in my opinion, he could, he could get over if he just believed that he could do it. And he put in the work. I mean, obviously it was going to take work, but that's what got me thinking about all this stuff. And it got me thinking about everybody in, in general and got me thinking about the people that listen to this show. And I was like, I believe in all of them. I believe in all of you guys. Like, I don't even know you guys, you know, I know some of you, I talked to some of you, but you know, we get a few thousand listens a month or more sometimes, but, um, and I believe in all, all of you people that listen to this shit. And, and the reason is because 
And I don't know why everybody listens. I mean, I, I, I try to, I'm not a guru or anything. I'm not like making all this shit up. I get most of this stuff from reading and I try to, I try to make sure that I cite where this stuff is coming from. Cause I don't want anybody to think that I'm, I'm up here acting like I made all this shit up, you know, but I, I would, I believe that if you're listening to this show, then obviously you are on some kind of path to either bettering yourself or continue on the path of being better. I don't know why else you would listen to it. Maybe, maybe you're just listening because you, I, I don't know. I don't know why else you would listen. So uh, with that in mind, like I believe in you. So I don't know if it's helpful to hear that, but I honestly believe in you. All right. Appreciate each and every one of you guys who are supporting the cause and, and continue to spread the love. And uh, yeah, stay up.